Hello, everybody. My name is Ricardo Cabrera, and I am the operations manager here at the Latino Chamber of Commerce of Boulder County. And today we have Joshua Stallings with us our, as our guest. He, uh, he is the regional, North Regional Organizer for CERC. So uh, welcome, Josh. How are you today? I'm doing well. Super excited to be here with you. Excellent, Josh. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so uh, my name is Josh Stallings. I'm the North Regional Organizer for CERC, as um, Ricardo already mentioned. I live in Longmont, Colorado. Um, I actually grew up in Texas, just outside of San Antonio, um, and always loved like the mountains and visiting Colorado. So I ended up moving up here for college and staying afterwards. Um, in the middle of that time, I spent a year living in Central Mexico, where I uh, worked in a shelter for folks that were migrating northward from Central America and learned all about um, you know, immigration and migration and the ways that as people in the United States were so intimately connected to people in Central America and Mexico and, and around the world, um, even when we don't realize it, you know, the ways that we vote, the products we buy, all these things affect people around the world. And so during that year of hearing people's stories about why they were migrating really opened my eyes and I think realized, made me realize the connection I have with um, immigrants in our country and made me want to do something about you know creating a, a country and a state that's more welcoming for immigrants. Wow man that's awesome Josh I'm I'm impressed I didn't know you had such a wide background in uh, in, in Mexico and uh, with the immigrant community so uh, it makes perfect sense. Uh, so let's yeah, start I, with the, oh sorry go ahead. I was just gonna say I'm I think like a lot of people in Colorado too like I love getting outside and hiking and biking and skiing and all those things. So it's awesome. Excellent. 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 So, well, let's start with the, uh, the first question and uh, the basic question. You, you are uh, the original organizer for CERC. So let's start with the easy question. What does CERC stand for? Yeah, so CERC stands for the Colorado Immigrant Rights Coalition. Okay. And, and what does it do? Yeah, so we're a, a statewide membership-based coalition. So that means that there's organizations around the state that are part of CERC. Um, there's about 90 in total. And these are everything from like grassroots organizations where you know, a handful of people got together and said, let's create our own group to um, labor unions, faith communities, LGBT rights organizations, victims advocate groups. I think all these organizations realize that in one way or another, we are so um, connected to immigrants in our state. Like we are immigrants. Um, we need immigrants in our state and we want to make sure that the state is more welcoming and friendly for our immigrant community. Um, what do you mean by we need immigrants? How, how can we need immigrants? Yeah, that's, I, I think, um, you know, it, it, you don't have to look far to realize that immigrants are really holding up so many industries in our economy from agricultural, agriculture to hospitality to restaurants um, to tech, you know, we have immigrants doing all kinds of things. Um, and I think sometimes we, other people, but you know, part of CERC is whether you're an ally or whether you are impacted yourself as an immigrant, like there's space for you to be at the table and to advocate for the acceptance of all immigrants in our community. Wow, yeah, that's so true. So uh, CERC, how, so how old is CERC? You know, where does it come from? Yeah, we've been around since 2002. And so I think what happened is in 1999, the state of Colorado made it so that undocumented people could no longer get a driver's license. Um, there were a lot of other things happening at the time, right? And after 9-11, I think we saw a lot of anti-immigrant rhetoric um, where people were saying really negative things about immigrants. And so immigrant leaders in the state at the time and some allies said, hey, we need to get together and have some kind of way to have a voice and to have power and to make sure that when our legislators are meeting in the Capitol in Denver, that they're hearing from immigrants and know that these issues affect us too. Yeah, okay, so uh, about 18 years and you guys have been doing great work for all that time, 18, 19 years. Um, so how exactly does CERC help or what kind of services do you offer to the immigrant community? Yeah, that's a great question. So, you know, there's, some things that we do around public education, around um, you know connecting people to resources, and then also that piece around advocacy. 
Um, so one piece of public education that we do a lot of is know your rights presentations to the community. We wanna make sure that you know, you know what your constitutional rights are, whether you're a citizen or not, um, if you're stopped by law enforcement or if you're stopped by ICE and really knowing the difference between the two. Um, we've done a lot of work in the state to make sure that people know that law enforcement agents are not the same thing as ICE. They should not be targeting people um, based on their immigration status. And so there's a clear division there, right? Um, we also, you know, really one of the other services is um, we provide legal services workshops for people applying for DACA and for citizenship. Um, it's hard to adjust your status in this country, right? Like we need a federal immigration reform, but there are certain avenues. And so we help as much as we can with those two to, to get more and more, um, more and more citizens from our immigrant community. Um, and then I think the other, the other resource that we often support with is around getting your driver's license. If you're not a citizen and if you're not a permanent resident, it's a more complicated process. Um, there's been a lot of problems with um, this program since it was started in 2013, but also a lot of great things, right? We're, you know, we've now had over 150,000 people in the state that are either undocumented or have temporary status get a license. Um, so we can train your organization to help people go through that process um, or connect you to different organizations that are, you know, guiding you step by step to get your license. Wow, that's a lot of that's a lot of services and a lot of great work. And I'm sure some of those things, CERC itself helped the state of Colorado to change, right? It's changed their laws so so immigrants would have more rights. Is that uh, can you give us another example? Yeah, that's that's correct. So like I mentioned the driver's licenses, right? So um, CERC and you know the organizations around the state that are part of CERC pushed for driver's licenses for all bill that was passed in 2013. Um, that same year, we were able to pass ASSET, which allows undocumented students in Colorado to get in-state tuition in college, um, which was a huge barrier before of people you know, having to pay outrageous prices to go to college. Um, and then a, a third thing that we've been really crucial in you know, uplifting and implementing is passing a law that prohibits um, sheriffs and our local law enforcement like police from detaining people for ICE. Um, and so that was really one of the, the biggest barriers that you know, allowed some collaboration between law enforcement and ICE. And so now that can no longer happen. Um, and so we're really grateful for the undocumented leaders that shared their stories and sat down with sheriffs like Joe Pelly here in Boulder and told them about you know, why we need this law. Wow, that is such an, uh, an important point, because you mentioned it a couple of times, the idea that the police is not, should not, and it's not connected to ICE. So, you know, I noticed around different immigrant communities, especially the un uh, undocumented community, that they're afraid of the police. And sometimes when they should be calling the police, or in cases like, you know, the flood in 2013, when the police was knocking, going door to door, offering help, uh, they weren't opening the door for them because they were afraid. And, uh, and that's not the case. I mean, the police really is your friend in this country and they should, you should not be afraid or, or compare them to ICE. Yeah, that's true. And I think, you know, there's definitely things with our policing system that needs to change in this country, but you shouldn't have to worry anymore in Boulder County about, um, you know, police and ICE working together. That should never be something that happens. And, you know, concerns that you have about policing, like we're, we have a great relationship with our district attorney and with our sheriff. And that's always, you know, I think they're always receptive to feedback too, right? So they're, you know, trusted people in the community and, um, you know, you, you are safe. And when you don't feel safe, like, please speak up because we're always down to change more. And they can call you guys and, and share this concerns. And then you have services and individuals or other groups that can actually help you with this, with this concern. Um, so, so won't you give us your, how to contact you so we can know how to do it. And just so you know, I'll put all this information down here and uh, your website, your phone number and, and so on. So people can, uh, don't have to write it down right now, but they can look it up later on in the description. Yeah, that, absolutely. So I'm always down to be called. Uh, my number is 830-832-4330. Um, you can call or text me whenever, and email is josh at coloradoimmigrant.org. 
Um, and there was one thing that I completely like left out and that's that CERC is also part of this cool thing called the Colorado Rapid Response Network, um, where anytime that you see ICE enforcement in the community, something you think is ICE, or if you've had a past interaction with ICE and you need support knowing how to navigate the court system, um, you can give that number a call. It's 1-844-864-8341. Excellent, and I'll have this number here as well, uh, so people know where to call. And uh, so, what what is this rapid response do? If you see something happening, you can call, and then what do you guys do? Yeah, so um, we have twenty four seven trained bilingual volunteers that speak English and Spanish that will answer the phone. They'll make sure you know your rights in the moment. Mm -hmm. um, and they'll hear more about what's going on, and so while they're on the phone with you, they'll actually send a message out to volunteers who can go to the scene and confirm what's happening. So I think we've had some instances where um, SWAT or a bounty hunter has showed up to someone's house and someone has you know, freaked out thinking it was ICE. And so we were able to go confirm about what's happening. Um, and then when ICE is there, we're able to make sure that they're, just to be present to watch and make sure they're not violating someone's rights and that you have the information you need to be safe. Wow, that's, a, that's so cool. That's so where I mean, it should be so easy to dial like a 911 and say, I need help, and then they could also help. I mean, that's an easy number to remember rather than a long 800 number. Uh, just a thought for the future, I guess. <laughs> yeah, we need, yeah, if anyone has ideas around that that can help us institute new technology, we would love that. Yeah, yeah, cool. So, uh, so Josh, let me ask you one last question here. Um, you, you, so you have a, a lot of organizations that form your coalition and you guys offer services and you offer, in instant help and, and other uh, other products, I guess. And uh, But how can somebody be involved? I mean, how can we, the general public, be involved and help and work with CERC? Yeah, you know, one, one thing that we really care about is we wanna make sure that you're able to plug in in a way that feels good for you. We realize that everyone has a different story and different passions. Um, and so you can definitely feel free to give me a call or shoot me a message. Because um, we can either plug you into one of the organizations in the state and in our county that's doing great work, or CERC is also looking for volunteers, um, whether you can be a bilingual dispatcher for the hotline or show up to a citizenship workshop to help guide through someone through filling out their application, um, or even talking to your legislators, right, and telling them about why we need reform or why, you know, what the experiences are of our local immigrant community. There's a lot of ways to plug in. Excellent. Well, what great company, what great group and information. Thank you, Josh, for sharing this with us. Um, and uh, before we go, I have one last surprise question for you. <laughs> Are you ready? Okay, I think so. <laughs> uh, here you go. So what is your favorite sound? What is my favorite town? Yeah. Within Boulder County? Anywhere in the world. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Oh, this is such a hard question. <laughs> um, hmm. I don't know. I feel like I feel like I have I have to choose two places. I think. I mean, there's a lot of places I want to choose, right? But I think I have to be real to my roots and choose my hometown of um, New Braunfels, Texas. That's where my family is, and it's just a beautiful place with um, a couple of rivers that flow through it. Um, and then I also have to, to choose the town that I lived in in Mexico because I feel like the family that hosted me there and the people I met opened a whole new world to my eyes. And so Tlaxcala plus Tlaxcala, Tlaxcala, Mexico would be my mm -hmm. hometown or my other favorite town. Beautiful places, both of them. So uh, thank you, Josh, for that. And uh, until next time. Awesome. Thank you all.